another major problem which we face is all of us have phones, all of us have <coughs> tablets and all of us have computers and we surf the internet for half of the day whether we're at work or school or university and we come across sites which we know we shouldn't be on but naturally the instinct of man and woman we have that instinct where we want to fulfill our desires so we go on websites which are not befitting for any human let alone a Muslim now these websites have reached such a stage where psychologists and neurologists and all sorts and doctors have even admitted to the fact that it, it has reached a stage of an epidemic. If you look at the statistics of people surfing these websites, then you'll be shocked. And if you read on the effects it has on your brain, you'll be even more shocked. And the reason we keep going back to these websites is because it becomes an addiction. <coughs> and this addiction can be likened to the addiction of, of drugs. Why am I saying this? Because when we take, if someone was to take a drug, a drug, then for example cocaine, then this will release dopamine from it into his body, from his brain. And this is that rush he gets, that high he gets, is the dopamine level, levels which are being transmitted from his brain. Now when a person watches pornography, then it releases the same dopamine in his body. And this dopamine gives you that feel good feeling and it gives you that high and it gives you that rush. And then what happens is you stop watching, but now these images are in your subconscious. They've been downloaded into your body, into your brain rather. And it goes from your short-term memory into your long-term memory. So you can keep on thinking about it. Because your brain wants that feel-good feeling again. And once it wears off, you will want to go and browse those websites once again. And again, and again, and again. So those dopamine levels are released and you get that feel-good factor once again. But we need to remember the verses which have been said that these are nothing but items of deception. And it will affect our way of thinking, it will affect, it will cause neural pathways in your brain where you will begin to look around you and everything in your brain will be processed according to what, you've been, what you have been watching. I've said this in a talk before where when you keep on watching these kind of websites, it will literally make neural pathways in your brain. Pathways, for you can liken it to an example, if you're walking in a field. So now, when you're walking in that field, if you keep walking over one, one path, then you'll see the grass will stop growing there, and it will form like a little dirt road or a dirt pathway for people to walk, and there'll be grass growing on either side. So in the same way in your brain, it will cause a neural pathway. Then everything you look at, everything which is processed from which you hear, when, when you see, it will be processed through those neural pathways. So what will happen is, when you see someone or something, the way you think about it will be in a dirty way. You will be looking at a woman on the road, and the first thing you will think of is something dirty. And your brain will reach such a stage where you will be looking at your own, now the billah, your own family members in such a way. You'll be looking at, to, and it will go to the extent <coughs> where you will look at people of the same sex in that way. And if you don't believe me, you can do this research. And now it's not so hard to do research. In the olden days, we had to look at books. If you tell a child today to look at a book, he'll say, what are you talking about? Tell him to read a newspaper, he won't want to know. But now with the click of a finger, you could read all of this. So we need to be wary and know where our limits lie. We need to know that those, those folders on our phones with 100 images of, of models and supermodels and glamour models are nothing but items of deception. <coughs>